I mean, really. Amazing, badass women today. Let's get this going, because we got, we got some more and more going. Here we go. Um, and I would really love it um, if we had time to clap in between each one, but we don't already. So like, we're just gonna keep going. Woo, yeah, okay, here we go. Um, Edith Perez, MD, very important. Oh my gosh, she's amazing. She's the Vice President Head of US Medical Affairs at Genentech. This lady's gonna talk about what does the future of cancer research look like? No big deal. She's just badass. <laughs> yeah, Hey, good morning to all of you. It's amazing as a physician, I've given lectures all over the world, thousands of physicians, but gosh, I've never given a talk to people like you. Thank you for allowing me to be here today. You know, before getting into the nitty gritty of what we're doing for cancer research, I thought I would share a couple of slides related to why am I qualified to be here with you? What have I done in my life to deserve to be here with you today? You know, breakthroughs and innovation are part of my DNA. I've been so fortunate to be involved in amazing research over the years. Actually, my accent comes from Puerto Rico. After I did my training in Puerto Rico, I, um, I actually came to California for training, uh, then joined uh, UC Davis and, and Mayo Clinic. Then uh, by thinking, like many of you, positively, visionary, getting a team together, I was able to develop uh, some pretty amazing clinical trials that have translated into improving the lives of thousands of women diagnosed with her 2 positive breast cancer all over the world, which actually got me to TV multiple times. Uh, but in addition to you know, the work itself related to research, I've been involved in something that I think is as important as, as many of my research accompli accomplishments, and it is what we started the sole marathon completely dedicated to raising funds for breast cancer research and to help underserved women in 2008. And we've helped more than 9,000 women who are receiving therapy for breast cancer. So over the years, you know, this research has continued. And now in, in 2016, I'm working on developing a vaccine for patients diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer. But I tell you, I'm so happy to be here today to share what we're doing new next. You know, after 20 years at Mayo Clinic, a great place to uh, practice medicine and do research, you know, I had a big van, actually two big vans, come to my house in Florida, and I moved here to San Francisco just six months ago to, um, to do various things. Number one, you see there, I joined Genentech, an amazing revolutionary company, actually the largest biotech company in the world, where we have tremendous new agents, amazing scientists, and fantastic people that will take us to the visionary world of curing more and more patients with cancer and other malignancies. But as you see on the bottom part of this slide, I really enjoy life. Uh, running, you know, being with friends, and in the middle is my wifey, who's sitting back there. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, actually, tremendous supporter, and all of us have someone like, like her uh, b behind us and in front of us on the side and all this stuff. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> um, but now let me get into uh, some details of what we're doing about the problem of cancer. You know, cancer really is, it has a tremendous global and personal impact. Too many people are still diagnosed with cancer in the United States and globally, but I can assure you that many patients diagnosed today are being cured of this disease based on the advances that have already been accomplished. But of course, more work remains to be done. There are several trends that we can think of that will drive the changes in cancer research and care. And most importantly is that this cancer care needs to be personalized, convenient, and optimally effective. We want our stakeholders, patients, people to be engaged and be part of the solution. We want to utilize emerging technologies because we want people to be able to have access to cost-effective healthcare. You may wonder, well, you know, a lot of money appears to be going to cancer research. There are a lot of stories in the news, but what is really happening in, in this area? Well, we are working to develop new treatments 
based on the molecular abnormalities of cancer. And the term that is used for this understanding of the molecular abnormalities of cancer is called precision medicine. What we're doing in, with precision medicine in cancer treatment is that we're learning every day the role of proteins, the role of genes in the development of cancer, as well as the importance of those genes in terms of the potential that someone will respond to existing therapies. But we're going beyond this. We want to catalyze precision medicine and precision oncology in 2016 and beyond by linking clinically available retrospective and prospective uh, data of the changes in the genes that occur in the context of cancer, then we want to connect this with what happens to people in the long term. This data aggregation will allow us to validate biomarkers. Number two, repurpose existing agents. And last but not least important is to identify new drug targets and new biomarkers that would ultimately lead to regulatory agency approval and access to patients so that they can do better. But in addition to understanding the role of genes in the context of cancer, there's another very important area that is harnessing a lot of research right now, and it is to revolutionize the understanding of the immune system, which can be present in cancer in three different ways. And I have three cartoons to show you this to you this morning. There may be two more cells that have actually no involvement of the immune system, and what we want to do is generate an immune response to the cancer. On the second part of the cartoon, there are some tumor cells that actually have some infiltration of immune cells, but even though there's some involvement of the immune cells, they actually don't work well enough. And what we want to do is actually augment the immune response to cancer. And lastly, but not least important, is that actually in some situations, there are actually already evidences of in a lot of activity of the immune system trying to eliminate cancer, but it cannot do it by itself. So we're developing new medicines to further increase or for all of us to have a very robust immunity against cancer. So those are the two main areas of research, understanding the genome, developing new treatments, and the second one is harnessing the power of the immune system to control cancer. In order for all of us to really take advantage of new science, new data, is that we need people to understand the importance of participation of clinical trials. Because in, it is through clinical trials that we evaluate whether these newer approaches will translate into better lives for patients. Studies have demonstrated, and some of you may not be aware, that here in the United States, only 3% of adults with cancers participate in clinical trials. And it is actually not that patients don't want to participate, it's that sometimes they don't know that clinical trials are available. So a call to action for all of you today is to think about this. Because we want any patient who's concerned about developing cancer, any patient who's been diagnosed with cancer, to really look at the internet to see what's going on, that's of course what we do, but also to think of the possibility of them participating or being part of a clinical trial that will not only help them, but potentially help many others who may be diagnosed with the same type of cancer in the future. So the future of cancer research and drug development depends on advocacy as well as innovation. And all we do, all that is being done, is placing the patient as the center of this cancer research that we are doing. We want patients to be empowered to find solutions with all of us as we uncover the genomic abnormalities of cancer. We utilize information technology, machine learning to look at the algorithms that may predict whether a particular gene abnormality is associated with progression of cancer. We really want to take advantage of the digital health revolution, certainly work with regulatory agencies so that these new promising therapies that we find in the laboratory really are accessible to patients. So on this note, at Genentech Growth, we're doing now what patients need next. I thank you so much for the opportunity to be here uh, with you today. And come join us February the 12th, 2017. Be participants in the 10th Breast Cancer uh, Marathon. 
help me join you know, more than 10,000 other people to help find a solution to this disease. Thank you very much.